Hey there YouTube, this is Here to Learn 442. I'm remaking my video on how the Lee case trimming system works. I got a new camera, so I'm remaking a few videos, starting with this one. So I'm set up right now for trimming some 7.62x54 rimmed. I've been trimming a batch of it, and that's what I'll continue with. I'll show you the system in general. So, pull the case out, pull the shell holder off, and what we're left with here in the base of this drill is what they what Lee calls the lock stud. And you can use this by hand. It has an attachment for checking it in the drill, and unless you want to tear up your fingers on this knurled knob. I suggest you do check it up in the drill. It uh, also speeds the process quite a bit. I did <clears throat> trim a few 223 cases with this when I first got it by hand and it was a very long, long process. It was very painful on my fingers. <clears throat> so to the lock stud we attach our shell holder which is a screw-on shell holder and as we screw it down tighter the lock stud in the center pushes up onto the case you can see that there and it's sticking up a little bit higher and so it locks it in it does a fairly good job however some cases get some oscillation and I do have cases that come loose from time to time and that can ruin a case but we go ahead and we load the case in there, tighten the shell holder down. <clears throat> now the next part of the system is the cutting stud or cutting head and the case length gauge. The case length gauge just like the shell holder is going to be different for every caliber that you trim. Um, the cutter head stays the same I use a pair of uh, pliers with tape wrapped around them when I take these uh, case length gauges out of the cutter uh, just so that I don't damage the case length gauge. This pin on the end sits in the flash hole which should be already devoid of a spent primer. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this down in here. What happens is that this length gauge when the tip of it comes all the way down it sits on the top of the lock stud and you can't cut any further so every case comes out a uniform length Alright, so as you saw there, we got a little bit of oscillation back and forth. It wasn't too bad. It didn't uh, unseat the uh, shell holder, so that worked out okay. And the next step in trimming cases is, now that it's trimmed, it needs to be chamfered and deburred at the neck. Um, there are burrs on the outside. I can feel them. They're sharp and uh, we need a chamfer on the interior to help in seating the bullet. So Lee's way of chamfering and deburring is this one tool. You use the outside of this tool for chamfering the inside of the neck and you use the inside of the tool for deburring the outside of the neck. I always like to run my fingers up along here afterwards and make sure it's fully deburred. This one's not. Run it again just briefly and that feels much better. So that case is done. One thing I didn't mention was that when I do this I modulate the pressure that I put downward on this cutter 
based upon how it feels and I also modulate the speed of the drill as you could tell near the end of when I was cutting uh, I was running the drill a little bit faster that's because I could tell that I was getting towards the end and I didn't have too much to cut and I was actually cutting fairly easily so depending upon if the cutter starts to bite into the brass or if it's nicely shaving the brass will determine if you need to add more pressure relieve some pressure or stay where you were at so that concludes my uh, new video on the Lee case trimming system I hope you got some good information out of it as always keep learning and share your knowledge thanks for watching everyone